Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Well, happy Monday to you, Calvary. I hope that you had a great weekend and uh, we're kicking off a, a great Monday with an incredible passage from the book of Colossians. Uh, just an incredibly powerful thing that I hope motivates you for a great start to your week as we reflect on the amazing things that Jesus has done for us. I'm going to read Colossians 2, verses 13 through 15. It says, In you who were dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made alive together with him having forgiven us all our trespasses by canceling the record of debt that stood against us with its legal demands. This he set aside, nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and put them to open shame by triumphing over them in him. Let me challenge you just to, to sit in that for a second. After you finish this episode, go back and read that a few times. Colossians 2, 13 through 15, and reflect on what Jesus has done for you. But I want to highlight and just break this down for us. Because first, it shows us that we're dead in our trespasses and sins. This aligns with Ephesians chapter 2, uses the same language there that because of our sins, we're dead. And we want to minimize, we want to go, oh, it's just a little thing. We want to justify and make it insignificant. But Scripture says, no, our sin, it, it's ruined our life. We're dead because of that. But, but it says that this sin has also created a debt. That, that we owe something to the perfect God of the universe. We owe a penalty, a punishment that should come to us. But the amazing news that this passage highlights is this debt has yeah. been canceled. And not some theoretical thing like the student loan conversation right now. It's actually happened. This incredible debt that we should have to pay, that we should have to face judgment and penalty for, it said it's been canceled. How did that happen? It says that, that, that God nailed it to the cross. Now, it doesn't mean there was little post-it notes like hanging up next to Jesus there, but it says it's nailed to the cross. Jesus was nailed to the cross. And the penalty that we should have paid, the judgment we should have felt, the condemnation that should have come on us was instead put on Jesus. Elsewhere in scripture, it says that, that, that we hand him our condemnation and in return we get his perfect righteousness. There's this great exchange that takes place. And the result is that we have been made alive together in Christ because of this, that we get this incredible hope and transformation that we're not defined by being dead in trespasses and sins, but instead we're alive and united to our creator. But here's the thing, this only happens if we intentionally decide to follow Jesus. Jesus says in John 14, six, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So this doesn't just automatically get sent to everyone's sin debt record, but instead it is freely available to anyone who comes and surrenders their life to Jesus. Romans 10, 9 says, If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So let me challenge you, if you've not made that intentional decision to follow Jesus, what a better way to start your week than saying, I am going to surrender all I am to the Lord of the universe who loved me so much that he did this for me. Because it's the only way you can have this good news and move from death to life. And if you have done that, let me remind you that this isn't just some get out of hell free card that you get to do once and tuck away. But if you really want this to be something that is applied to you and have your debt canceled, it means that you're choosing for the rest of your life to follow and obey Jesus. And so today, as you start your week off, make the decision to say, hey, I'm going to put Jesus first. I'm going to follow him. I'm going to honor him with everything I do today and the rest of this week and the rest of my life because there's this incredible good news that he has saved you and transformed you. And so let that result in a desire to serve and follow him because the most incredible news ever has happened. You have moved from death to life. I hope that you have a great and encouraging week, Calvary. We'll see you next time.